At the Montefiore Einstein Center for the Aging Brain, it's unique in the sense that we have a multi-step process and we have a um, geriatrician involved in that process. Um, so the geriatrician starts the assessment on day one. However, at the center, we actually start our evaluations prior to the patient and the family entering the room. We, I we developed a pre-visit uh, questionnaire that actually asks the caregiver and screens for stress. Um, and looks at the levels of stress of the caregiver. If that flags positive, if they have a need to see a social worker that's identified in that pre-health visit questionnaire, um, that patient is automatically set up with a social worker on their first visit. So we try to start the process prior because there's a lot of anxiety about going to the doctor, the expectation of what's gonna happen with my mom or dad that may have anxiety or may not understand why they need to come to the center. And there's a stigma about memory problems. So it's unique in the sense that we start before the patients enter the room, as as well as a geriatrician. And on that first day visit with the geriatrician, we look at walking, we look at functional assessment, we look at frailty, we look at memory, we look at the caregiver, we assess the caregiver for stress if it hasn't been done on the pre-screens. Um, and then in addition, we use other a battery of tests that was uh, utilized at the Center for the Aging Brain to assess memory. And that's done in an hour battery. Um, after that, they'll see a neurologist, and our team incorporates a neurologist, social worker, uh, a, a geriatrician, a geriatric psychiatrist, a rehabilitation specialist, so we all come together to discuss the patient's diagnoses. It is, but it actually saves you. Think about the risk for falls. If you're identifying a patient who's at risk for falls and they're identified as having a gait disorder that's recognized, that's a lot of hospital dollar saves and a lot of anxiety and pain and morbidity for that patient and the family. We actually keep a, a data set. We have our first uh, papers coming out. Um, we actually measure our success and the feedback, obviously, from the patient that's in front of us. Um, but also we're looking into looking at comorbidity risks and looking at risk for hospitalization and using this step model to try to see if this decreases the cost and, and the reducing the hospitalization rates. What we're seeing is actually a nice response from the community. So we are a consultation center. So we're trying to educate the community physicians and provide a service that is able to assess the patients for their cognitive level, for their walking disability, and actually empower our community physicians and teach them what's needed and become a center that actually can elevate the education about Alzheimer's disease uh, in the community, um, but not actually steal those patients from them and provide a service that will help guide their care. We recently have a grant that's funded uh, through HRSA. It's joint with NYU. The PI is Tara Cortez. We have site leaders here, Amy Ehrlich in geriatric, as well as myself for the Neurology of Aging. It's in conjunction with the community-based organization, RAIN, as well as the Montefiore Care Management Company. The focus of the grant is, is similar to uh, what we're doing at the Center for the Aging Brain. It's in teaching about Alzheimer's disease within the Montefiore Health System, trying to break down the walls, to really say that the patient now who is seen and evaluated at the center, we're teaching the primary care physicians how to recognize dementia. Because um, often in a 15 minute visit, it's very, very difficult to recognize that a patient may have a problem. So what we're doing now, and the screening will be in the Montefiore Health System, we're asking patients, do you have a problem with your memory? And providing very culturally sensitive um, and health, for, for health literacy screens that are very easily used and available in the electronic medical record. So we're going in teaching the residents, teaching the care managers, working with the RAIN community-based organization. They have a one-stop program there so that patients can then be referred to these organizations, can actually navigate senior centers, Meals on Wheels. Um, and so we're really trying to break, the, break down the walls and make the transitions from doctor to doctor much better so that we actually in the end, hopefully reduce costs and provide a better quality of life. And I want to reiterate, it's very hard to put a dollar on the quality of life. Um, we've had caregivers that we've um, placed in uh, medic, uh, placed their loved ones in uh, Medicaid. They've been able to get uh, some help. We provided education uh, and availability for home health aides for them based on their needs based and they've returned to work. So it's, that's a quality that we can, quality of life that we can't kind of put money on except for the fact that they're now able to provide for the younger children that may be at home. Uh, so that's a really an important initiative is the, with our focus on the caregivers as well. 
The issue of language as a barrier is actually not a factor for us at the Center for the Aging Brain. We've been really, uh, and at the Montefiore Memory Disorder Center. Uh, we're currently funded um, in the Bronx uh, by the Leslie R. Samuels and Fan Fox Foundation, recognizing that we have a culturally diverse population here in the Bronx. Uh, we have a bilingual, bicultural social worker to help with patients, to provide counseling. Uh, she speaks Spanish as well, so she'll be able to provide uh, counseling in Spanish. And we also have a second FanFox uh, Foundation grant that recognizes the need to test patients in their native language. So we have a bilingual, Spanish-speaking neuropsychologist that will deliver the CAB battery or the Montefiore Medical Center battery to these patients to identify patients with memory disorders. That being said, we have a myriad of other cultures here. We have, um, we can provide it in several different languages. So we actually bring translators with us, hopefully with a family member that can provide collaborative evidence that there is a decline in this patient and help with the history. But we provide these because validated tests are in many different languages. We brought in um, Mandarin um, uh, is a common, common language, uh, Chinese, we've done in Japanese, we've done Korean, we've done testing in Korean. So there's a, a mix of populations uh, in the Bronx as well, and we're looking um, now into establishing our own normative data. We know that the Spanish-speaking population in the Bronx is maybe quite different from our northern Manhattan counterparts or for people that are out west. So we have a lot of data that we have the privilege of collecting through our grants, and we're looking to establish normative data just for the population here.